Welcome to Bowser Training Lead Code Solution. If you want the best mock interview experience in North America, feel free to check us out at bowsertraining.org. Or if you have any questions, feel free questions, feel free to send us a, a email to bowsertraining at outlook.com. So we'll try our best to help you. So today we're going to talk about a uh, problem, which is uh, uh, number six six two one task scheduler. So it's essentially, this problem is about giving you a uh, task array. So each task is represented by a capital letter A to Z, so that we know it's only 26 unique tasks. And uh, um, basically, each task can have different number. And then they have this unique constraint that giving you a non-negative integer n. So basically, two same tasks must be at least an interval n so that CPU can execute it. So it's kind of like a round robin if you just f firstly look at this problem, right? So take this for example, so when n equals to two, that means, okay, you first execute a and b, you don't have any, any other tasks, so you have to idle for one cycle. And then this is now reaches two so that you can execute another task again. So this is a problem. And then they were, it was asking you, what is the minimal least number of intervals that the CPU need to execute all those tasks? So here's the uh, thought process. So first of all, you can see the array is, first of all, is not sorted. And then, I mean, of course, we can sort it. And it does not necessarily come into the order of, uh, you know, uh, all the A's comes first, all the B's come second, those kind of things. So, but we can easily sort it. And then the, we notice, as I said, the task is a finite set, 26 maximum. So, and then it is asking about the extreme value, like uh, in this case is minimal value. So. Normally, when it asks minimal value, we'll be thinking, oh, can dynamic programming be applied here? So we rethink about this. It's kind of hard because it's uh, hard to come up with a mathematical uh, induction formula. Um, but there is a, a solution. I have a link here. So if you are interested, you can see. So you can actually deduct a, not really a mathematical induction formula, but it, like a normal DP, right? Um, but they do have a, a formula that you can calculate. So I won't put the details here because uh, let's say in real interview you come up with this solution it just only means this whole interview is not a uh, the signal is not valid because you know this problem before because I highly doubted anybody can come up with this you know real interview unless you saw it before okay so now we'll be like oh can we do any binary search it doesn't it's not sorted even we sorted I don't think it will help so now you cannot apply DP, so another thing coming to mind is, okay, maybe we can be greedy here, just uh, doing a round robin, right? So you always, we can sort it first, and you can always have the largest job, for execute the largest job, and then as long as you are not reaching the maximal interval, you just uh, put the second largest job here, and then third largest job, etc. cetera. So, uh, however, there's a caveat here. So don't, we cannot do like just the super strict round robin, like everybody has a, uh, as a chance to run. It, it is more like as long as you reach the maximal interval, you have to schedule the largest job right now in your array as soon as possible. So by that, this is an example, right? So if you have, let's say, five A's, B, C, D, E, those tasks, and the interval is two, if you're doing strictly round robin, it will be, it will be like, okay, you first do A, and then you do B, and then you do C. So strict round robin means, okay, everybody has equal ch equal chance to run. So you, then you have to do D and then E. Now you can execute A again. But in this case, you have to idle, idle, idle because you already, uh, you um, because A is, has the largest number, but you did not utilize every CPU cycle to execute A. So the correct way is apply A, the largest number, and the second largest number, et cetera, as soon as possible, as long as you have a chance. So it's like, okay, you first execute A, and then you have B and C. And now you have a new CPU cycle. So instead of executing D, you should still, because A at that time still has the largest number in this array, right? Because um, we have a zero B, zero C, but now we have four A. So one D, one E. So A is still the largest. So now let's apply A, and then apply the second largest D, E, and then apply A. So in this case, you only need 13 cycles versus previously strict round robin, you need 15 cycles. So that's why uh, it is called a, a greedy algorithm. So you always apply the you know local optimal first, and then in this case, it is your local optimal is it is actually uh, global ox, uh, optimal. So having this thought, so implementation is relatively straightforward. So you have two ways to use this to solve this. One is use sorting. So essentially, it's like every iteration we will sort after you know after you deduct any number of n intervals in between. So 
we utilize we initialize the array we're doing this uh, cast it to integer and and then we sort it first so as long as you the largest task because we sorted ascend in the ascending order so your the last element is always the largest as long as you have a, a task that is not finished what you will do is you start from zero and then uh, this is actually basically the count of how many intervals you have as long as i is less than n that means you just keep executing but you know, early terminate if you don't have any tasks. So you always starting from the last and then you minus the task to one. And then you basically just has to increase the number of intervals and your total CPU cycle plus one. So this also account for the uh, idle case. And then later after every iteration you sort. So with this method, so the time complexity is kind of hard to estimate to be honest. It's, we call it all to the order of 10, which is 10 is the number of iteration, iterations given the sort every time you sort. It's kind of like a, uh, every time you sort, it's like an n log n, but it, this is a fixed thing, so you can you kind of can think about it as a constant. But this t, because uh, because the array uh, is not really in the order of arrays, really in the order of how many elements are in the array and how they uh, co correlated to each other. So that's why we see it's basically the number of iterations here, and also it depends on the number of intervals. So it's kind of a hard to estimate. Uh, another way is to use uh, the space, space complexity, in this case is 01, because it's a constant array with a size 60, 62. So um, another way is to use priority queue, max keep. So essentially, it's the same idea. Instead of uh, you always do an n log n sort for a fixed array, you can basically just uh, get the largest element. And then, but you then you have to record all the elements you kind of like pop out, and then later, you have to pump it back again because there will, as long as it is non-zero, means there's still task. You pop one task out, then you have to still pump the, pop the, uh, push the task in. So first of all, we keep a priority queue. Oh, this is purely a hack in Python, so that uh, Python only supports minimal heap. In, instead of using it as a maximal heap, you just put a negative value there. So as long as there's a task in there, right? So i is still the interval. So as long as it's not empty. Um, so if it is still has task, you just uh, basically um, you still have to put it put it into the temp because this is only one cycle. That's why we need this temp variable to store it so that you know you cannot directly pop because then you execute this task again if this is the largest. So you put this one minus one uh, number of of uh, tasks still left. Put it into this temp array, or else um, you just directly pops this element out. Which means this element is not is uh, is basically equal to one, and then you just directly pop it out, um, and then we plus the CPU cycle. If uh, nothing left, we break all else. We plus the CPU cycle. Remember, because you you have all this element in time in temp, which is still has task left after this iteration, like it reaches the after it reaches the uh, total interval, and then you have to reput push this element into the queue again. So the time complexity is still similar to the before, it's O to the order of t, t is the number of iterations. So except a O log n type of a, a sorting, so here we're basically the log n kind of push. So the space complexity is O1, because you have a fixed size of array and a fixed size of heap. Um, that would be all. If you have any questions, feel free to leave any comments, and feel free to subscribe to the channel if you want. We will have a constant video update every week. Okay, thank you very much.